Let me show you how we can enhance a sunset sky using Lightroom to make it more vibrant and warm. As always, you can follow along this Lightroom tutorial by downloading the raw photo from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump right into it. Since this is a super contrast rich scene with very bright highlights against some super deep shadows, we want to work on an HDR file. So the first step for us is to merge the HDR. We want to select the whole HDR sequence down below. Once you have selected them, right click on them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. You don't have to change anything here, just hit the merge button. And we will end up with the HDR file like this. So let's go ahead, open up the basic panel and I want to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to lessen the contrast a bit and Adobe Standard also helps brightening up the darkest parts of the image. Now since we are working with an HDR file, we can safely pull up the exposure to restore details from the darkest spots of the image. I don't want to raise the exposure too much because we will run into problems with the highlights but I think somewhere around here looks pretty good. We can further work on those darker parts by simply bringing up the shadows. And of course, we can also use the blacks to safely restore some details. All right, now the bottom half of this image looks quite good for me. I do want to bring down the highlights so we get some more details back from the sky. Actually, we don't have much detail in the sky since there is not a single cloud in here, but bringing down the highlights will bring back colors in the sky. And that is very, very important. So I'm going to drop it a little more. And right at this point, you can see a little bit of a warm color tone coming in right above the horizon while we still have some cold color tones on top. And I pretty much want to keep it for the rest of the editing process like that. Now there are a few more things we want to do before heading into the masking menu and that's to bring up the texture. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity slightly because I want this image to be sharp and clear. At the same time, I'm going to drop the dehaze, which adds a little bit of glow around the brightest parts of this image, almost like an autumn glow effect. And then let's bring up the vibrance. Wonderful. So that's our base image we can compare to before real quick and you can see it looks much better with much more details to look at. Now let's jump into the masking stuff. I'm going to create a linear gradient and what I want to do with this is I want to cover pretty much all of the dark parts of the sky like that. And within this linear gradient I want to bring down the exposure quite dramatically and thus just make the darker parts of the sky even darker. This adds some very nice vignetting effect and it has a bunch of benefits. One being we are getting some more attention to the center part. And another benefit is we are going to add contrast between the dark sky on top and the bright warmer sky at the bottom part. So I wanna further work on this by using another linear gradient coming in from the right side. I wanna make it a little smaller, just like that and maybe rotate it a little more. So only really the right side is affected here. And again, I'm going to bring down the exposure. And in this area, you can see this part is kind of a little bit warmer than the left side of the sky. So to fix that problem, I'm going to drop the temperature, introducing more cold tones to the right top part. All right, now we made the top part a little more interesting. What about the bottom part? I want to use a sky selection mask and this is looking pretty good so far. However, I only want to affect the bright part of the sky. So I'm going to click on those three dots. I'm going to choose intersect mask with and I'm going to choose radial gradient. Now I'm creating a radial gradient covering the whole width of the image and I'm just covering like the bottom half of the sky. This is where we want the warmer tones to come into play. So what we can do with this mask, we can introduce more warmth by erasing the white balance temperature slider. And I'm going to raise it all the way up so we can actually see some very warm color in here. We can make this effect stronger by bringing up the saturation. But what we can do as well, 
Like in this case, the colors are still not strong enough for my taste. We can click on this little color box right here, set up the hue to something very warm somewhere around here, and now play around with the saturation slider to further introduce color. So I think right about here looks great. And with just one little mask, we introduced a lot of warmth to this specific part of the sky. Wonderful. What I'm gonna do as well is to add a little bit of glow coming in from behind the buildings. So I'm going to create a radial gradient and let's cover this bright spot right here. And I'm going to add another radial gradient to this mask on the other side of that building right around here. In here, I'm simply going to increase the blacks. This already helps quite tremendously with the glow effect. I'm also going to increase Increase the temperature once more, making these areas a little warmer. And then for even more glow, I'm going to drop the clarity and I'm heavily dropping the DAs. This will not only increase the glow effect, but it will also add a little more brightness to these areas. So just be careful, we don't want to overexpose, but a little more brightness right at the brightest part of the sky looks great. Okay, so I wanna add a little more contrast to the upper part of the image. I'm using a linear gradient with which I want to cover those buildings. And then I'm going to say subject and choose sky because I don't want to change the sky. Now with the building selected, I'm going to slightly drop the exposure and I'm also going to increase the contrast a little bit. So we basically just made these buildings in the back darker. Another reason for me to do that is I want to add a little bit of light on top of these buildings, doing some kind of time blending with another image. So making these darker will help add the lights on top later on. Now let's also work on the foreground. I'm using a radial gradient covering this big hole in the ground, just like this. And what I want to do in here is I want to bring up the shadows so we can actually see something down here. And I also want to bring up the exposure just a little bit. Perfect. And this will make the surrounding areas brighter as well because the selection is not that precise. So I'm going to create a linear gradient covering the bottom part and I'm going to say subtract using a radial gradient to subtract that hole in the ground like this. And what I want to do with this mask is again, I want to add some kind of vignetting effect just like with the top part of the sky by bringing down the exposure and i'm also going to bring down the whites and i'm bringing down the whites because if i would bring down the exposure too much we would end up with underexposure so i'm just going to use negative whites to prevent the underexposure from kicking in okay now I do want to apply a little bit of dodging. So I'm going to create a luminance range mask and I'm going to click somewhere in the bright spots of the foreground, right around here. That looks great. I'm going to further adjust the luminance range. I want to select all the highlights, but I want to select less of the midtones. So I'm going to filter out these by adjusting these handles right here. Okay, that looks good. I don't want to select the top, so I'm going to say subtract linear gradient and then i'm just going to mask out the top part in here what i want to do is to bring up the exposure to add the dodging done perfect and that's the image after the masking adjustments so we went from this to this and especially the sky looks really really good at this point after the masking adjustments, I do think this image could use some white balance adjustments because at the moment it's really, really cold. I want to change that by bringing up the temperature a bit. This also helps making the sky warmer, obviously. So right around here looks good to me. We have a natural looking foreground with a very warm looking sky. So that's perfect. What we want to do next is a little bit of color grading. So I'm going to skip over the color mixer. What I want to do instead is to go to the color grading tab. And here we want to start with the highlights because the highlights will affect the sky the most. So we want to set up the hue first. Again, go with something in the warmer color range right around here and bring up the saturation. And here we can go really, really crazy to add this 
really cool color effect. You can see me pumping up the saturation quite a bit here. I think this looks great. Of course, if it's too much for you, then just use a lower amount of saturation. I'm also going to head into the midtones and again use a warm color tone, making the midtones warmer. Let's bring up the saturation. This time I'm not going too high with it, just right around here looks good to me. And we want to keep a little bit of color contrast, so we're going to use the shadows to apply a cold color tone. So right around here, and for the shadows I'm using a super low amount of saturation to keep it subtle. That looks great. Now the final part of the color grading is happening in the calibration tab. Here, what I think works really good for this image is to bring down the blue primary hue. And at the same time, I want to bring up the saturation a lot. I also want to bring up the saturation of green and red. Okay, this just makes the colors pop. And usually for those sliders down here, I'm just playing around with them until I find something that looks good. Usually I do most of the things with the blue primary sliders. So we're pretty much done with the Lightroom adjustments. What we could do is we could head into the transform tab and use the vertical slider just to kind of bring more attention to the hole in the ground. So maybe like this. And this will also kind of fix the wide angle distortions of the buildings in the background. So I think that looks great. We can also sharpen this image in the details tab. So bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the alt key and then increase the amount of sharpening. And we are done. Here we have the image after the Lightroom adjustments and you can see the sky looks so much better as well as the whole rest of the image. Now, as I said earlier, I wanna add some lights on top of these buildings with another image. So there's really not much to it. I just need to synchronize the transform settings. I'm going to select the second image, hit the synchronize button. I'm going to hit check none here because I don't want to have these editing settings applied because that would change the colors and exposure of everything. Instead, I wanna use transform and I also want to use crop. Then hit synchronize. Now with both images being done in Lightroom, I'm going to right click, go to edit in and choose open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so here you can see the second image which I'm using just for the lights of the buildings. So the editing for it is really not important. It's all just about the lights. First, before we stack them together, we need to align them since right away they are not perfectly aligned select both layers, go to edit and choose auto align layers. So with this out of the way, I'm going to change the blending mode of the upper layer from normal to lighten. And we wanna apply a black layer mask on top. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and click the layer mask icon. Then grab the brush tool by pressing B, set the opacity to 100% and the foreground color to white. And now with the brush set up, I'm going to paint over these buildings to create this time blending effect. Wonderful. Now let's merge everything, selecting both layers and hitting Ctrl E. And now we need to fill those gaps. So I'm going to hold down the Ctrl key while clicking on the thumbnail. This will select the image without the gaps. I'm going to go into the select menu, choose modify and choose contract just two pixels. This makes the selection a little bit smaller. And the reason for me to do that is I just want to have some safe space as I fill the gap. Now I'm going to hit Control Shift I, which will invert the selection. And because we have made the selection a little bit smaller previously, we will now have a safe selection to cover all the gaps 100%. So all I'm doing now so I'm going to use the generative fill tool to fill the gap. All right, and that's it. So I hope you can use this little trick to make the skies of your images a little more interesting, warmer, more vibrant, whatever. If you have any questions about the editing, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.